Andor continues to impress with episode four as we get a backstory on a character I didn't even know I would ever want. Episode four explores Mon Mothma as we see her moving funds secretly with Luthan Rail, and we even get to see some of her home life with a husband that she seems to absolutely hate. It's small little things like this in Star Wars that just help expand the overall story because Mon Mothma is one of the most important characters and she's also one of the characters who has had the absolute least amount of screen time in the entire Star Wars saga. I mean, all we really get of Mon Mothma in the original trilogy is just that little scene in Return of the Jedi. We get a little bit more in Rogue One and then there's a tiny little cameo in the prequels. This time around, it feels like Mon Mothma and it seems like she's going to be a big part to play in Andor, which I think is really, really good for the overall tone that this show is going for. And that's another thing that continues to impress in this episode as well, the tone. One of the things that really stuck out to me in today's episode, and they have had it in the past episodes as well, is the different sides that we see from Andor's side to the side of the Empire with the security forces that just got basically booted and got all fired from their jobs. Every time they show the Empire, everything you see, while it is a very pretty visual, everything is like these very sharp pointed edges. If you look at just the overall aesthetic of everything we see in the Empire, but at the same time, it feels so lifeless. It's just a very interesting visual aesthetic to take away from this show. If you just really dive in and take a look and try to pay attention to it, it'll really begin to stand out and you'll be able to see it. We even got introduced to some new characters in the Imperial Intelligence Supervisors with Supervisor Daedra Miro. Seems like she's going to be a new character that we're going to be paying attention to. She actually gets herself into a little bit of trouble as she's trying to really dive into exactly what it is that Cassian did with stealing that device that we saw him trying to sell in episode three. She's sort of laying out a pattern of rebellion activities to her superiors, and they just kind of brush it off and are like, yeah, whatever, we'll check it out later. Don't worry about it. Which, if you go back to episode three and you go back to Luthen's conversation with Andor, is exactly how Andor described that he was able to steal these things so easily because the Empire is just sort of use it as nobody can really hurt us, nobody can really take it away from us, nobody can really harm us because we're the Empire. At least that's how Andor sees it, and that's kind of what we're getting from her superiors in this episode as well. Another thing I found interesting in this episode was Andor meets with a new sort of group of people as they're going to begin this sort of plot to steal a very large amount of imper uh, Imperial credits from the Empire. It's what Luthen has sort of setting him up. And he gave him another speech in this episode as well about fighting the Empire for real. And I thought it was just another sort of solidifying moment to, okay, now Aunt Cassian and or decides he's going to go down this path. He is going to group up with these guys, this small little band of rebels. And I think, you know, this is going to be the thing that sort of begins to set him up to what we will see him when the time comes in Rogue One. It kind of reminds me as he's walking towards the camp and everyone in this group is sort of beginning to question, you know, why are you bringing him here? Why is he coming here? Can we trust him? Uh, and then we even have a scene where he's sitting around a campfire and one of the members gives him this tablet. It's like, you need to know everything on here by tomorrow morning. And Cassian's like, uh, well, can I finish eating first? For whatever reason, that scene just kind of reminded me a lot of the exact, a very similar scene in Solo, where Solo's Tobias Beckett and his crew, and it's just a very similar scene where they're kind of questioning, like, are you sure you're ready for this? And they're both in very similar situations in which they're going to go steal from the Empire in, you know, the upcoming episode, or in that case, the rest of the movie. Now, the new group of characters that were introduced to, Vel, Sken, Nemec, Tamarin, Sinta, and Gorn, definitely all feel a little disposable right now, and they are all kind of stock characters for what it feels like is going to be happening. There was one moment where we did get to see... Vel, who's the leader of this group, as she's bringing Andor back to camp, or Clem, as he's now going by with his code name, they you get to see TIE fighters go over. And it was just kind of a nice little moment to add that in there to make it feel as they're on this new planet, uh, which is called Aldahani, which just 
kind of looks like England, I guess, uh, just sort of these rolling, rolling green hills. But as they're on this planet, it, with it sort of just being a barren planet, at, but at least with more greenery as opposed to the traditional brown sands of Tatooine that we're used to, having the TIE fighters go over and just sort of having cover the ground and having them hide under the rock just sort of, again, adds a little bit of the weight to this show, which is something that even though it's a slow burn, and then this episode does just kind of end on a little bit of a softer moment with them just being like, okay, we're going to go do this mission constantly throughout this show. And I feel the slow burn of it. You still, however, feel the stakes. They, they, it's something about this show is just causing you to feel the weight of what's about to come and why this show is important. It's an incredibly hard thing to describe unless you actually watch it and you can just feel the tension and it just comes through the screen and you just feel it. It's it's this very, very unique thing I've never ever seen or felt in Star Wars. But Andor just continues to do its own thing in Star Wars. Even as we're introducing new characters, it still all feels very much inside of the framework that this show is trying to set up, which is still its own thing in Star Wars. It's absolutely great. I give this episode a three, maybe four uh, out, of five, out of five stars. It's another slower episode, but I feel like the things we're beginning to see are all going to come to a very good fruition here in the next few episodes. So guys, be sure to shoot me a transmission. Let me know what you're thinking about Andor, and I'll be sure to read these on the show. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And remember that traveling through hyperspace ain't like dust and crops.